If you don't make any money, slap on the wrist. It's human error. Bad marketer. You aren't very good at what you do. So if they keep seeing you and they keep hearing this message, Vince Reed is the best marketer of all time. You should get Vince Reed's products. You should, you know, buy all everything that he has, right? You keep, <laughs> you keep hearing that all the time. Eventually, like, maybe I should buy some of Vince Reed's stuff. Yo, Vince. I got a question. All right. Why do most people who try to scale their ads end up ruining their campaigns? Steroids, Mike. Steroids. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean by that? <laughs> they need to put their ads on steroids. All right, so there's a lot to this. All right, so number one, most people advertise with one line in the ocean. Think of fishing. I'm advertising with thousands of lines in the ocean, right? So if I've got a thousand lines in the ocean and you've got one line in the ocean, who's gonna catch more fish? You. Me. The second part would be, they're not really focused on creating omnipresence. You know, I remember I, sold a, I used to sell a course teaching people this, and it's leveraging retargeting the right way, being able to strategically, you know, stay in front of your interested prospects. And then I would say the third thing would be, they don't, they're not trying to run up the score. You know, you gotta think of marketing like sports, right? Okay. Like if I'm playing you in sports, I'm trying to make sure that there's no doubt that you know and I know, that you know that I know, that I'm the best at that particular game. We could be playing chess. I'm trying to dominate. They're not, they don't have a mentality of trying to run up the score. They're looking for that, like, that one hit, that one, they're trying to be one hit wonders. So those are really the overall reasons. And a lot of details in between, but that's that's why. All right, so number one, fishing with 100 lines. What do you mean by that? You've heard people say this. You'll hear me on consulting calls, mm -hmm. and they want me to help them with their marketing. And they always ask me this question. What platform works the best? And then they hate when I say this. I, I ask them another question right back. I say, what's the real question you're asking me? They go, what? I'm like, what are you really asking me? And they go, which platform works the best? I'm like, I actually think what you're really asking me is which platform can you advertise on that's gonna make you the most money? And they go, yes, that's actually what I'm asking you. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is that every ad platform works. Mm -hmm. Like think about what it is that you're actually paying for when you run an ad. When you load money into Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're running the ad, when you give a person money to do a direct mail campaign, what are you paying for? For someone to see it. You're not paying them to make you money. What you actually paid for was an impression for them to show your ad to someone else. If you don't make any money, slap on the wrist. It's human error, bad marketer. You aren't very good at what you do, right? You don't have a good offer, right? You, they don't want what you have to offer. Step number one is just understanding that component, right? Understanding that it's not the platform. It's you. So the, another question that I get from people is they say, okay, I get it. If they all work, let's say I just start with Facebook. Which other one should I use? Mm -hmm. And I say, that's another bad question. It should be, how can we get the campaign on the Facebook? And then how can we set up the campaign on TikTok? And, 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 and. Mm -hmm. That's how you need to be thinking. Most people think of like, I, which one should I do? Which one can I make the most money? Mm -hmm. And they're not thinking about marketing the right way. Because the way you want to think about it is, how many times can I put $1,000 in? Mm -hmm. Visualize this. So imagine standing in front of a vending machine. And you put a dollar in the vending machine. And it spit out $2. I'll do that all day. Do it all day. But these marketers would say, I have a thousand dollar budget. I'm going to put a thousand dollars in the vending machine. They're not thinking about marketing the right way. The way you want to think about marketing is how m many times can I put the dollar in and get a dollar out? And then also you got to think about it this way, like just in the whole scheme of like the and thought, like if you just think about it in anything in life, especially Americans, we're, we're kind of like spoiled, right? go into a grocery store, there's millions of things all over the place. I, they did a study once and they said the most like purchased thing in a grocery store is bread. So imagine if my grocery store, all it had was bread. Would you go into that grocery store? If I was looking for bread. But likely if no. was, you had an option, you'd go into the other one, right? Yeah. So why don't we have that same approach with marketing? We're always looking for that one thing. And that's why, you know, fishing with a thousand or a hundred lines is kind of an analogy that I use with marketing. So number two, 
Creating omnipresence. Creating omnipresence is basically just being everywhere at once, right? Like if you're a Christian, you've heard that analogy with God, right? He's everywhere. So you want to kind of have that same approach in business. But with that comes strategy. And, you know, I've done some, you know, different talks about just understanding the ad profit grid. So once you understand that, knowing where your customers are, if they're cold traffic, people don't know who you are. If they're warm traffic, people that visit your website or, you know, watch videos. If they're hot traffic leads or buyers, understanding that. How can you structure your ads in such a way where you're creating omnipresence, where you're putting the right message in front of the right person at the right time? This is where marketing gets fun because you can kind of, you can almost legally like, or, or ethically, or I don't even know if it's ethically, you can <laughs> semi brainwash the viewer because perception is reality. So if they keep seeing you and they keep hearing this message, Vince Reed is the best marketer of all time. You should get Vince Reed's products. You should, you know, buy all everything that he has, right? You keep, <laughs> you keep hearing that all the time. Eventually, like, maybe I should buy some of Vince Reed's stuff, mm -hmm. right? So if you think about that with creating omnipresence, ad campaigns can, can scale a lot longer because, one, people kind of know you, they start to like you, and then they start to trust you. That makes a lot of sense because you are essentially placing yourself in front of your ideal customer wherever they go. Wherever they right. go. If you with, do it right. With a very consistent message, solving a specific problem with mm -hmm. a specific outcome. All right. So number three, running up the score. Yeah, this is this is fun. And, you know, this is really something that we've kind of taken on, you know, as marketing has really started to evolve and change. Running up the store is basically this component of marketing that we create here where we're consistently creating new ads each and every week. What you have to do is you have to figure out a way to get in flow, right? So step number one is just figuring out who is your audience, right? What problem do they have and how can you solve it? So you come up with your main core offer. We call I call this kind of like the eye of the storm ad, right? So we run an ad right now to promote OPVR off-platform video retargeting. I think the if I can remember the title on the top, it's something like new ad retargeting, retargeting technology, technology, right? right. So we know that if anyone sees that ad, that they probably are running ads, they understand retargeting, and it kind of starts there. That would be an example of an eye of the storm type of ad that we start off with. But that, now all the additional ads that we create each and every week are just there to support it, answering different objections that people could have or creating more value. So for example, I might create an ad on you know, why um, ad costs continue to, continues to go up. So I might just create an ad explaining why, um, how you can fix it, and where you can go to, to fix the problem fast, mm -hmm. right? And then link them to my product. That could be another ad that I would stack onto the first ad. And then you just do this each and every week. And you run all of those ads, remarketing those to all of the different audiences of people that have watched your videos, landed on your website, watched webinars, or opened up emails. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you want to do to just stay in front of those individuals. Right. But, the, but the idea of running up the score is just to create a bunch of ads that put the perception and turns that into a reality of them consistently seeing you fix the problem that you know that they have, right? And not thinking about it from like a one ad perspective. Right. And at the same time, you're also able to test your ads Absolutely. because you're creating so much multiple variations of ads. Absolutely. So and also the way you that. want to think about it, specifically today with social media, is you want to create ads that live forever. For example, we talked about this yesterday, I believe. We we're like, yeah. we're, we're creating this content on social media. We know that content, like for example, an Instagram post, it has a short shelf life, right? How could we not have that happen? How could we create content that lives forever? That's just creating content and turning that content into an ad mm -hmm. and creating it in such a way where it's valuable, where people, new people would find, would watch it and continue to take the necessary action to fix their problem. All right, so that's great. Now, for someone that still needs a little bit more understanding on this topic. Can you break it down for them? Yeah, so I think that there's a couple of things you want to think about if you're running ads and you don't want them to fatigue, right? Focus on these two things, chemistry and identity. Chemistry meaning like, what is your perception? Like, why would somebody want to work with you? And when you're creating like ads, right, and they're all working together, like, do they tie into each other? So for example, could I land on an ad, one ad that's saying, here's how you lower lead costs. And then if I saw another ad that says, here's how you boost conver conversions, they're different ads, still solving a similar problem, but it's creating chemistry and it's like perception that, like, okay, I, I get what's going on. And in terms of an identity, you see these marketers sometimes, like one week they're doing like e-com, the next week they're doing drop shipping, and the next week they're doing selling a course. Yeah. They don't really have an identity. So figure out what your chemistry and identity is. I'll give you a kind of another story. So sure. we, I talk a lot about my daughter's basketball team. Mm -hmm. 
you know, she plays on a third and fourth grade team in the highest pool. So they're like playing kids like, you know, two, three, four years older. They're not, they're, they're definitely as skilled, if not more skilled than even these older kids, but really they have chemistry. They've been playing together for several seasons, mm-hmm. same exact team, and they've got an identity. They play extremely fast. They play really good defense. We play teams, and after they play us, they play all these different ways. Like, they don't have any chemistry. They definitely don't have an identity, and we beat them every single time. It's the same thing in sports, in life. Like, it's chemistry and identity. Like, figure out what is the chemistry with your business. Like, what is it that you're trying to do? What's the big picture? What's the problem you're trying to solve? What is your identity? How are you going to do that? How can you get into flow? And this is hard. We fall victim to, like, how do we get into flow? How do we get to a point where we're doing a similar action over long periods of time? Because that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to get your ads not to scale, if you you know, are creating a consistent message and you're creating a lot of ads and you're creating ads that are solving problems that people would watch even if it wasn't an ad Mm -hmm. and they can live forever, okay, then your, your messaging and your ads would never fatigue.